Coming up on this year-end edition of Locked On Senators, the best of the best. It's been a good year for LOSP in 2023, so we took some of our favorite interviews and some of your favorite interviews and got the best parts. All that coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 948 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, you can follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube where a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app, use promo code LOCKEDONNHL, and get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Today is Friday, December 29th, and Pilsy, can you believe it? Another year in the books. Yeah, this is... uh... Well, not quite full year for us. We started in November 2019, so uh, classic math guy. We'd be giving ourselves a little bit of an edge there, but it's been one heck of a year for the Lock On Senators podcast, and I mean, we couldn't do any of this without all of you. No, we really couldn't, so shout out to the citizens out there that helped make this show what it is. Pilsy, 365 days in 2023. Correct. How many episodes of Locked On Senators podcast do you think we did? This year, not counting the postcast. Okay, that was going to be my first question. Uh, Let's go 248. Oh, man, I'm getting good at this. 245. And you know how much things have changed since the last year? Our last episode of 2022 was titled Alex DeBrinkett is Elite, all caps. Ugh. So the more things change, the more they stay the same, though, because the Senators are still looking to find a way out of the depths of the standings and into prominence once again. But Pilsy, we did have a lot of laughs on the show this year. We had a lot of guests as well, and we're going to hear from a few of those coming up. But a reminder before we get to that, that you can always go find any interview, game day preview. We've got certain players highlighted when we speak about them. We make individual playlists on YouTube. So if you're bored over the holidays, you're traveling, you can always go back and and find some of your favorite moments, whether it's the Ring of Honor series that we did this summer. Those are all available to you all the time on YouTube. Yep, Uh, all of our summer content. Uh, Maybe check out some old draft profiles. If you see a name of a guy playing in the NHL, you're like, who the heck's that guy? He just got drafted this year. Boom, search it up, and uh, you can find a prospect profile for him. And uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff that you can revisit as this was a wild year for the Ottawa Senators, Ross. Just uh, we we should do this more justice later on, a recap of this year. But just quickly, like you look at the team being sold, Michael Landlauer being the winning bidder, Pierre Dorian fired, DJ Smith fired, Shane Pinto, first ever NHL player, uh, suspended 41 games for gambling. Like the Ottawa Senators have had a wild year, and that's saying something for them. So lots to review here. They've had a wild year. We've had a wild year as well. The show is just continuing to grow. We can't thank all of you enough, the citizens, the sponsors, everybody, Almost, and we're going to get to a million on YouTube just in one year next year. We got oh so close, finishing this year about 945,000 views on YouTube and about 790,000 on uh, on audio podcast platforms. So overall, about 1.7, 1.8 million 
that people contributed to Locked On Senators this year, and we can't thank you all enough. It really does mean the world to us, and we wouldn't go above and beyond and do these episodes while we're on vacation. I'm on my honeymoon as you're hearing this. Pilsy's on the beach in the Dominican, and we're like, there's no way. It just wouldn't feel right for us to be sitting there sipping our mimosas (laughs) <laughs> knowing that we didn't leave the good people who, whether you have to work or what the situation you're in over these holidays are, we wanted to be there for you. So Pilsy, if people are listening to this right now and they're like, Oh, Pilsy's on the beach. He's having a time. What's your, what's your drink of choice on the beach? I am a big pina colada guy. I can't get enough. Like, any of the drinks where making it at home or getting at a, a bar would be too much of a hassle and too expensive. Hit me with the blended drinks. I want every drink I'm having, Ross, to come with a little umbrella in it. Got to do it. What's it? It's like a pina colada mixed with a margarita. What were we having in uh, in Cabo? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have enough time to go over everything we had in Cabo. <laughs> oh, so good. Hey, wherever you are, whatever you're doing this holiday season, make sure you're being safe. Make sure you're having a good time and make sure you're surrounded with loved ones and uh Pilsy, Wait, Ross, sorry what is your what is your favorite drink my goodness oh i'm a margarita guy but i mean i, I also yes. love pina coladas <laughs> i'm a gimme guy i'll take i'll take whatever you're gonna give me oh yeah uh, anything uh by the pool and or beach is great yes absolutely so yeah everyone hopefully you're having a, a nice easy going holiday time and uh now let's get to the best of the locked on senators podcast in 2023 Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at AG1. Guys, we love AG1. It is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it every day. I gave AG1 a try because, look, I was tired of taking so many supplements and I wanted a single solution that supports my entire body and covers my nutritional bases. And hey, you might be thinking, Pilsy, you're in the Dominican. There's no way you're having AG1. They got travel packs. You can take them on the way to go. I know Ross has his travel packs over in Hawaii as well. I drink AG1 in the morning, before working out, before my coffee to start my day, and it makes me feel like I'm ready to go. I'm doing something good for my body right off the hop. It's great. I started drinking AG1 to try to have a healthier lifestyle, and that's really helped me out. I've had a better feeling of more energy, my digestion a lot better, support for mental clarity and focus, and more. So replace your multivitamins with one simple drinkable habit. AG1 helps you build your health foundation first. It covers all your nutritional bases, and it couldn't be easier. That's why I use AG1. If that's what you're looking for, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs, like I mentioned, with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Check it out, guys. Today's episode is also brought to you by Farm to Fork. Visit farmtoforkdelivery.ca for all your premium meat and seafood products. This is the time of year where you have your New Year's resolution. So what better way to control what you're eating than making sure that you have enough of it, one, and two, making sure it's quality ingredients that are raised, all natural, antibiotic and hormone-free, ethically raised as well, and are absolutely delicious. Just go check out their five stars average review score. The meats are flash frozen right after being hand cut at the butcher's table, so that seals in as much freshness as possible. Compare that to the grocery store. You don't want to know how long your meat's just been sitting out there. At Farm to Fork Delivery, products are individually vacuum packed, so you only have to take out what you need, and they also bring it right to you with free and convenient delivery. They've got great steaks. I love my ribeyes. I'm going to get some in the new year, no doubt. And they also have special high, high-end high steaks. You can get the tomahawks. Tomahawks are are the best, too, because they, they're a, a crowd pleaser. They're an, I'm going to impress my friends. Pull out the tomahawks. You can get all that at farmtoforkdelivery.ca. And because you're a listener of Locked On Senators, add 10% off. Absolutely add 10% off by using promo code LOSP10. So LOSP10. For 10% off your first order of farm to fork delivery.ca, taste the farm to fork difference. You will never go back to grocery store meats. 
So when you talk about uh, the Ottawa Senators, you've been following them for a few years. Something tells me around 2018 is probably the time. And uh, it's been a long rebuild since, but Brady was the first piece of it. Fourth overall back in 2018. Like, how have you watched the core kind of form around him going forward? You know what? My wife and I were just talking about this. And, you know, this might offend people. But I was a little wishy-washy when he first got drafted there. But at the end of the day, it was a blessing in disguise. You know, it, it was a real... You know, it was the best situation for him, um, just the way things played out, um, the way they treated him. Um, and now there's a lot of hard work, both the front office, the fans, the players, and everybody involved to get where it's at today, where you now you have stability with ownership. You know, a lot of good people around the team, bringing players back. And now you have guys like Stutzel, you know, Sanderson, Brady, Batherson, Norris, you know, there's, there's so many, you know, Shabbat, um, you know, there's there's a lot in the chick there's a lot to like about the situation. It's just unfortunate they're, they're in a tough Atlantic division. Yeah. But, you know, we're really thrilled uh, what happened with Brady's maturity process, you know, with the coaching staff, DJ and Pierre and, you know, Ryan Bonus and the people they surround Brady with. Um, it's been a blessing in the disguise and we're so happy and we're really thrilled that he's part of it. And hopefully they can get over the hump here in the next, uh, in the next year to get in the playoffs. Cause in the Atlantic, there's a lot to be said now with injuries in Florida, injuries in Tampa, you know, Boston is missing a few guys, you know, Toronto's a lock, but everything else is wide open. So hopefully everything's good to go for the, the Sens early in the season. They can be healthy and ready to rock. Hey, if they don't, then uh, we'll just get you on local radio midway through the year. <laughs> hey, if my daughter's team loses another one this weekend, I might have to get on and give chew their team out from being soft. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to go there again because the Ottawa Senators do not play soft. I was there so close at Matthew's team last year. Yep. Um, it wasn't like I was rooting against Brady or rooting for I just didn't like the way they played in a pivotal game against Ottawa, and I was a little pissed off at that, and I knew they were going to Toronto, and I just wanted to rock the boat. Matthew was not happy about it. It was a win-win situation, too. You know, if they if they stunk and didn't make the playoffs, I was right. Yeah. But maybe <laughs> not to be more of them. I should, I should have got executive of the year. What is it about this team that gives you the confidence? You said it off the top of the show. Love hot takes off the top of the show that this is going to be a big year for them. What is it that they've done in this offseason or or that they've done accumulatively that makes you feel like, okay, this is a team that has the pieces put together to be successful? Well, first off, I think, you know, going out and getting a, a solid goaltender, you know, to have a 1A and 1B because they're both going to push each other in Forsberg, who's been outstanding. And I believe he was a waiver wire pickup. But getting Corpus yep. Allo, I think, here is going to be huge. And chill the other night against Pittsburgh where they had six power plays to none, but that's another story. Um, I think the move they made to get Chikrin, uh, you know, if you can get 75 games out of Chikrin because he's had some injuries in the past, but he's a heck of a defenseman. Now you have a really good top four. You don't have to overuse. And I'm going to go on record saying Sanderson will win the Norris in the next five years. Um, I think he's a special player. Uh, Branson looked good the other night. Hammer is going to be that guy who blocks shots. And then you got Clevin in the wind. Um, I think down the middle, you know, first of all, Pinto has to be signed. It's a joke that he's not signed. That's on the Ottawa Senators there. Um, but if you can get, if you've got, you know, Stutzel, who is a superstar in the league. There's no doubt about it. To me, he's a superstar. You saw it last year. The kid is phenomenal. Um, then you got, you know, Norris, if he's healthy, hopefully. And then you got Pinto. You got Ridley Gregg, who looks outstanding. You've drafted well. You got the, you know, the veterans. You got Brady for the size. You got bringing in McEwen. You got Castellick. Parker Kelly plays hard. You got two great veterans, um, you know, who show they've done it in the past with Drew. Uh, and I feel bad I'm r- rambling on with Tarasenko. I'm sure I'm missing a few guys. Batherson looked good the other night. But you got these guys all locked up at a young age. Their core, their guys. Um, and this financial world, salary cap, you're in pretty good shape, you know. And then you got Joseph, who's won before. Right? I forgot. So you got the pieces in place. you got to stay healthy. You need to have a good start. I know everybody's yeah. saying that. On Ottawa. They haven't had a great start. But I think with the two goalie system and the better defense, they'll be able to score goals. And then they have that part in midway through the year where they have a road trip and they do, you know, 
you know, like they did with Chicago and out west last year, Calgary. They had a horrible that was road so, trip killed them. I was so pissed off at Brady. He wasn't me, him and I weren't even talking because I was so mad at him. You know, uh, and I just feel bad that I got mad at him. But anyways, you get the start and that one road trip crazy cost him because they were only out by what six seven points at one point. Well, uh, well, you'll appreciate this. I know you like a few beverages. We were at my bachelor party in Cabo. They trade for Chicker, and we have the best week ever. Pilsy finds out that the team's in Chicago on his layover, and that's the effort he got to see. Oh, I was-, was betting them to win by four goals. I was betting them to win by five goals. I had so much money down. I was excited, and it was a complete Chicago, stink. Chicago, which ended up helping Florida at the end, beating Pittsburgh. But they were trying to lose. I mean, yeah. you know, that's the first game of the road trip. Like, you yeah. can't have that type of effort. And that's something I don't say very often because DJ's done a good job with his coaching staff making sure this team is ready. And they play hard, but they had a horrible road trip that just eliminated them right there. So I think, you know, that that's experience too. I think, you know, I think Drew's been a big factor with the, with helping these young guys out. And hopefully Tarasenko does the same thing. And I, I just – I like their team a lot better. They're playing in a tough Atlantic division, which is probably the best division in hockey. Let's face it, Buffalo's gotten better. Detroit's gotten better. So, you know, it'll be interesting, but I have faith in these boys. I think you'll see an even better Stutzel who was up here. I think Sanderson's just going to go boom. And, you know, then you're in good shape for a lot of years with the score. That's awesome, man. How much has Brady talked to you about the new ownership and uh, and what that could symbolize in town? Well, they, I, I, I've got to know Mike a little bit, you know, through watching junior hockey and stuff. This is before, and he seems like a, a really, really uh, a guy that everybody wants to play for. He wants to win, obviously, business first, but he's a fan of the game. He, he likes to compete, and he's done a great job with Hamilton, uh, who now is Brantford, I guess. But uh, I think it's incredible. I haven't talked much to Brady because they've been so busy. They're up in Halifax, and um, – getting ready for the season. So I'm in coverage. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be up there in November. So I always enjoy going up there. And I think Mike's going to do a great job with his staff and, you know, take this team to the next level. One thing Mike brought up, and I was kind of leading you into this with that question, is uh, kind of reinvigorating the alumni aspect of things. I know you've played a big role of that in St. Louis. Like, I, it's kind of too easy of a question to ask, like, you know, how important is alumni? Clearly it is. But in what ways can an organization take care of those who have played for them in the past? Well, I know some guys, some guys are the opposite, but you have to get the alumni involved. I'm not saying they have to be in decision making, but a guy like Alfredson, you know, who's such a great player and such a great leader needs to be involved, whether it's down the rink. You know, we had Bobby Plager around here for a long time who, well, God rest his soul, but was just a tremendous person and light, you know, one of those lighthearted guys. You know, we have guys who are in the Hall of Fame that are working for our team. So I think it's important to be involved. Uh, I think it's great, you know, from not just being around the guys in the rink, but great for youth hockey. It just brings more excitement because they've had some great teams and a lot of those guys still live there. And I think it, it just it's just going to make a positive experience for the young guys here um, who I probably grew up watching a lot of these guys and idolized them. So I think it's great. Mike is a smart guy. Steve Stale is a smart. Pierre Knowles and Ryan Bonus. So I think with that connection, I think it'll be really good for the team to have more and more guys involved. Chris Phillips is up there. You know, there's a lot of guys. So, um, you know, Neil's up there. I mean, these are great people who put a lot of sacrifice in to making a success, you know, successful franchise, and they should be around. Yeah, absolutely. And now, speaking of family, uh, this, is, this is something I wanted to ask you. I believe it was Matthew. Uh, I'll take take you back to when Brady was uh, trying to sign his deal and things got right up to the minute uh, uh, that season. But I'm pretty sure it was Matthew that said, when you're dealing with a Kachuk in negotiation, you're dealing with all the Kachuks in the negotiation. He was talking about Brady's contract. I mean, <laughs> Obviously, as as much as you want to uh, uh, enlighten us here, but what does that kind of go through? Like, are are the three of you sitting down and maybe the agents involved, and you're looking at all options when it comes to to Brady's contract, and you're all kind of chiming in with your opinion and how you think uh, things should go. Especially, you mentioned at first you were kind of wishy washy about the Ottawa Senators and Brady being there, and then ultimately he signs a long term deal, is named captain, and now things are looking good here. So. When you're having those discussions as as a Kachuk clan, what what's going on there? 
Well, your brother-in-law is the agent too. I yeah, mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I trust Newport. They're a great company and they do well. You know what? I was, you know, I understand this. I don't think Brady understood it. And Matthew should worry about Matthew. <laughs> yeah, that's why it was so funny because he wasn't even talking yeah. about his own deal. Yeah, I'm like, Matthew, let's go. You're not helping this situation. But I understood, <laughs> I understood his business. I thought it was a terrible, slow process. And it was basically small potatoes, if you ask me, the way they were dealing with it. Um, I was pissed because, you know, your cost, you know, it is business is business. Hey, you're not going to give the player with everything they want. You're not going to you know, get whatever you want if you're a lot of senators, but you hate missing camp. You want to be yeah. there. You want to be with the guys. It helps all the season. It just, you know, but it is what it is. That's the way God rest his soul. GG wanted to deal with it. And, you know, we dealt with it. We got it done. Um, but ultimately it's Brady and his agent. And but Brady will ask me for my advice, you know, and nobody wants to sit. It's just, it's the worst thing in the world. You want to be back playing. Um, especially when you're, you know, you're away from your friends and your buddies. This is your life. It, it sucks. It really does. But I'm glad everything worked out. Um, you know, and he was named captain after that. I thought it was a huge honor for him, and I was so happy for him. He loves it there. He really does. You should see that goofy yeah. bastard. I mean, <laughs> he's endeared himself in the city, him and his wife, with charities and, yep. you know, playing street hockey on the street with the kids there. He's, he's out of his mind. I mean, you know, and uh, – but he, I love it. I love the fact that he's dedicated. He wants to be the best player, and he's with all his buddies. You know, sometimes a GM – they go and sign a guy and the coach talks to the GM a little bit, but not a lot. And just a lot of moving parts in some of these signings. Right. Well, I remember the very first day I saw Jacques Martin, he comes over and he's, you know, gives me the standard welcome to the team. We're happy to have you. And he goes, you're a lot, you're a lot bigger than I thought you were. And I was like, Oh, okay. I said, well, maybe, you know, I'm sitting there wondering, I've yeah. been six one for years now. Um, I, I haven't changed a whole lot in the last, well, I don't know, six years, but I can't, I kind of let it slide. Um, and then he comes up to me later on that day. You can tell it's still kind of eating at him and I don't know what's eating at him, but he skates over and he goes, uh, how did you like St. Lawrence? And so Jacques Martin went to St. Lawrence university okay. and, um, so did my brother. So now at this point it clicks to me. He thinks I'm my brother. Oh, no. Yeah, he thinks he signed my brother, Sean. And my <laughs> brother, Sean, played pro hockey, played in the NHL, had a cup of coffee with the Tampa Bay Lightning. But here's the funny part of it is my brother's like 5'9". Yeah. And he's a speedster. So this is why Jacques was so perplexed. He was like looking over thinking that like Sean Rivers had a growth spurt or something. Anyways, I, I looked at him. I said, oh, Jacques I said, I, I didn't go to St. Lawrence. I said, I I thought it's an awesome school. My brother went there and he's like, Oh, okay. All right. Well, great to have you. I was like, okay. I was like, All right. This is going well. <laughs> you were yeah. up 120 points in Sudbury. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're right. Those are some pretty good times. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Sleeper. Guys, Sleeper is the fa daily fantasy app that we love to use, especially daily fantasy hockey. You can win 100 times your money playing on the Sleeper app. As the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network, it's our top choice for all sports, not just hockey. And you can check out any of those sports, NFL, NBA, MLB, college football, whatever you like on Sleeper. And what I love about the Sleeper app, they've got such a good group chat option. The group chat allows you to let your friends know, hey, I got a big week coming up and you can talk some smack to them, let them know that they're in trouble. And what I also love about the app is entries can be made in under a minute. Time is money, so you can quickly get those entries in. With studs like Nathan McKinnon, Brady Kachuk, Claude Giroux, Nico Rantanen, you can find all these guys on the app. Just choose stats like goals, assists, save, plus, minus, and more. You heard me, Sens fans. 100 times payouts on sleepers. So start paying attention and get your picks right so you could win big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details. Only available in the U.S. for now. Today's episode is also brought to you by Glebe Central Pub. Right in the heart of the Glebe, 779 Bank Street. Make sure you go check them out for good times at the GCP. 
The GCP is not only known for having great food, tasty drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. They also make sure to put on events that get people fired up, whether it's trivia night, open mic night, live music, or a darts tournament happening at the end of January. There's always something going on at the GCP. They're also an Arsenal supporters bar. So in the mornings, guys coming in rampant, raging, soccer hooligans, having a good time. Make sure that you bring the vibes when you head to the GCP. It's free there at the GCP. The vibes are free at the GCP. You know, it's only $17 at the GCP round ticket shuttle to and from Ottawa Senators games. That's awesome. Forget the hassle. Forget that parking lot. Getting out of it is a complete joke. Just let Sue do all the heavy lifting, sit back and enjoy. That is all courtesy of the Glebe Central Pub. You can go head over to their website, GlebeCentralPub.com, and visit them, 779 Bank Street, right in the heart of the Glebe. When you go there, let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. The vibes are free at the GCP. Today is Tuesday, October 31st, and Pilsy, we've got a very special guest for the entirety of today's show. Yeah, I mean, it's Halloween, so we didn't want to just do the same old, same old. We thought we'd bring in someone uh, someone special for today's well, I, episode. I really like your costume, Pillsy. What are you, a farmer today? Yeah, I'm dressed up as a Sens fan slash farmer, so we'll see how that goes for me. Well, we have a Sens fan slash farmer, and we have the Predator with us as well, as the man, myth, legend, Mark Mathot joins us. I can't even let's, take it seriously with that. Let's thing. see you move those pincers. I like the the pincers being moved. Oh yeah. How much? <laughs> how, yeah, you're proving how much time you spent with Sparta Cat right here with, with the moves. I need I need you dancing, shaking around. Are right, are you gonna be going up <laughs> houses like that? Because I feel like if, if a six foot three, two hundred and twenty pound man, I don't care if he's got kids with him, if he's wearing that mask, we might be in trouble. The reveal. The Scooby Doo reveal. I gotta take this off. <laughs> you look like you just want a 30 minute Peloton. All right. There we go. Look hey. at my like I'm red in the face now. <laughs> just, yeah. So hey, there's no I, there's no breathing. I, like there's no there's no slit. That's why for those watching, um, I couldn't use uh the prop during the entire episode because I'm literally suffocating wearing this thing. <laughs> so. Well, predators they don't need oxygen, right? They're from another planet, so oxygen is not really uh important wow. for them. Well, no, no, they do need oxygen because if you've seen oh, they... the Predator movies, they integrate just fine in our on our planet. So, um, you know, they don't they don't need a breathing device or anything like that. So, anyway, all well, good. Matt, but I'm a huge, you're... I'm a diehard Predator fan. You're integrating just fine on the Locked On Senators podcast. So I'm stoked that you're back for another episode with us. And hey, I spent an afternoon as Belly, the mascot for the Belleville Senators, and. That changed my entire view on mascotting. Like they had me like skating around the ice, like doing like fake crowd pump ups and stuff like that. And I was an absolute mess after that. So for those uh, men and women that spend uh, an entire like five hours shaking kids hands and doing crazy stuff in those outfits, kudos to them because it is not an easy job. We had uh, we had Sparty um doing the hometown tours with us when i played with the sends and so they we yeah. kind of roll around in a camper trailer like an rv to go to like hawksbury or any town outside of ottawa yeah. and um you know it was it, like we're talking in the summer here you know it's june july yeah. and the weather it's warm um and he'd come back in and you could just like just completely leaking like yeah i could not imagine and he's not going out and wearing it for you know 10 minutes he's had it on interacting with kids playing like street hockey and being goofy for three hours and then coming back in. So I have nothing but respect for those guys and what they do. And they never break character. They never speak. It's very impressive. Unless, oh unless you're <laughs> <color> over here. <laughs> oh, that's great. One more for the road. <laughs> Talk about scaring the kids. Jesus. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, so what's new, man? Are you always been a Halloween guy? Yeah, well, I, mean, most, I mean, most of us are, I think, right? Especially when you're very young. Um, the idea that you can dress up as pretty well, or pretty much whoever or whatever you want, and then go door to door and ask for free candy. I mean, it's. <laughs> I mean, it rivals. I want to say it rivals Christmas. Christmas is great in the moment. You get that instant dopamine hit when you see all the gifts and you're unwrapping them, but. 
Um, there's something about Halloween, though, roaming the streets at night. It's dark out and everyone's kind of, you know, wearing some kind of costume. It's 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 special. My kids are so pumped. They've been we've been doing a countdown like my son for the last two weeks. How many days, dad? How many days? And like I'd have to show him like how many fingers and stuff. It's um, the, it's it's an exciting time for young kids. Was it a problem on day 10 when you had to tell them you only have nine? <laughs> I set you guys, I set you up for that one. Yeah, no, I nine and a half. My kids days, don't get that. Yeah. yeah. So you got like the the Halloween advent calendar basically going on. <laughs> Pretty much. And, but it's 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 cool now because my youngest, my daughter, she's four now. So I, I feel like they're just gonna be ripping from home to home. We're not gonna have to hold her hand and take her to the door. Okay, I, I'm very excited to see how they handle it tonight now that they're a year older. I love it. I love it. Have you picked which neighborhood you guys are going to terrorize? Yeah, like we can't we can't do it here because it's a little more sprawled out where I live, and there's no street lights. So and you have to walk like a kilometer <laughs> to get yeah. from home to home. So we're gonna go uh, just down the street into like the Manitoba Estate area, like just outside. So homes are a little tighter, and um, we're gonna meet with a few couples and families and do that. So yeah. Well, uh, if you're listening to this and you live in the Manatic area, make sure you get those full-size candies. You don't want meth going full Adam Sandler and Big Daddy and <laughs> taking the water. Amen. Off. Amen. Wait, I agree. One more Halloween-related question before we move on. Uh, which teammate of yours was the best Halloween guy? Like every year you're like, oh, this guy is going to have a sweet setup or something cool. Every team has one. You know, like there's yeah. there's always a couple guys that go above and beyond, you know, uh, I can remember Antoine Vermette when I played with him in Columbus. Um, he always went hardcore into it. I, I mean, the costumes ranged from characters on TV to whatever. But, you know, the guys that hire makeup artists to come yeah. over and do work on their faces. I know I always I heard this story of I think it was Sean Donovan. I wasn't playing with them at the time. But guys would tell me how Eric's old house in Dunrobin, he had like white furniture everywhere. I mean, and this yeah. is like like all over the home. And apparently Dono showed up in like a, a Hulk outfit, like not an outfit, but oh, rather no. just paint, green Uh-oh. paint. And it ended up all over the house. So I, I don't know. Like there's, you always get those guys that go. And that's something I always avoid. I don't know how you guys feel about it. But the uh, the, the, the paint jobs, like that's something I try to avoid because it's so much work and I can get kind of lame. So yeah. I just go for a standard costume. I don't like covering my face too much. I enjoy breathing. Um, otherwise, it's a good time. Was Craig Anderson a race car driver every year? <laughs> Andy, you know what? I'll say this. Andy always mailed it in when it came to Halloween. I can't remember a time where I was impressed with the <laughs> costume that Andy was rocking. Andy was a lot like me in that kind of downplayed it a little bit and just went for comfort. Well, I mean, he could have just put on a white T-shirt and been Mr. Clean every year. <laughs> True. And uh, you Fair need the earring, though, Ross. The earring is key for that. Take us into the arena, though, into the Avicii Arena. What was the yeah. atmosphere like for both those games? You know, it was so much better on Thursday night. And I don't know if that was a function of it being an 8 p.m. Uh, start. Today was 5 p.m. And it's, you know, sometimes you can, you know, those late afternoon, uh, early evening games can sometimes, maybe the buzz isn't there, but it was pitch black. Let me make it very clear. It was pitch black outside. So it, it felt like a night game. But, you know, I think Thursday, based on, Ottawa up for nothing, Detroit coming back, tying it at four, and then that sort of kind of back and forth three on three to end it with like Tim Stutzel's goal is going to go down in a, you're going to see those great debates on podcasts like yours where what's the best regular season and most impressive. Like that to me is like with the Peter, remember Peter Schaefer up and over, was it Marty Thurko with yeah. Dallas or whoever he put it up and over? Like, oh yeah, I, I think there's a great debate to be had. Like, what's the better hand eye coordination? Uh, Peter Schaefer or Timmy Stutzler, and it's a great debate. And but that's what you're going to remember. And it was like you, you. I think you left that game emotionally drained because you felt like, oh my god, I've been through the ringer, right? This game, I think you felt like, did somebody replace my beer with like a Nyquil and a warm milk? <laughs> yeah. That's how I think a lot of people feel. But at the end of it, you still wake up and they got the two points, right? So, yeah, I, I, I think uh, again. Right now, it's about getting points and winning games. They got point. They they allowed the opponent to get a point. Okay, but they got four points out of here. 
Yeah, and Ian, we said Minnesota, they can have the point. They, we don't mind giving Minnesota <laughs> a point. It doesn't really affect us too much. So that's nice for them going home or uh, up against the Leafs tomorrow. But, uh, oh, Ross, you want to jump in here? I'm just wondering if it played at all an effect. Uh, obviously, Detroit has such a rich history of Swedish uh, players, same with, yeah. Toronto, same with Ottawa, whereas Minnesota, like, I don't think it's a natural – if, like a fan base where it's like if you're a, na- uh, a natural Swede, if you're from there, you're not going to be attracted, I don't think, that much to the Minnesota Wild. So how much of the people from talking around, I'll ask it this way, what percentage yep. do you think were native Swedes that were just excited and went to the game versus people that traveled to go for the experience? Ooh, good question. Um, it's funny, though. You, the one thing is, and I think the Ottawa fans, and, and, and they'll tell you either if you're in the chat and you're at the game tonight, feel free to weigh in. But there was a lot of Minnesota fans, like a oh, lot yeah. of them. And, and yeah, I think I think most people would have been surprised. That would be my guess. If you're at the game, you'd be surprised. And I wonder if there's that whole sort of, if you think of the Minnesota, of this, the state of, Min, uh, the, of Minnesota and Minneapolis, St. Paul, it's very much infused with like kind of that Scandinavian uh, culture and feel, right? And so okay. yeah. I, I don't discount that maybe there are some people that, um, you know, for whatever reason um, – our, our Minnesota Wild fans by lineage or whatever. So uh, definitely tons of Detroit fans. I would say of the four teams, just visually, I felt like I saw a lot of Red Wings jerseys, but I wasn't in the I, – I opted not to go to Toronto, Detroit in the building. So I didn't – I can't sit here and tell you that I saw tons of Leafs jerseys. But even in the streets, it wasn't like – it didn't feel like the Leafs fans were dominating. I would, I would argue more Wild – Maybe wild sands and leaves are all about the same, you know? Interesting. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, that's, that's great for the NHL. Like, um, I know they were saying on, uh, Elliot Friedman's show, they had Luke Robitaille on and he was saying, look, it's great to go do these global games, but you can't just go and leave and that's it. Like, you're not going to build fans. You're not going to keep yeah. fandoms there. You're not going to have the kids that go to those games. Like, you have to keep kind of continuing on that tradition. So I, I said it to Ross uh, before you came on, Ian. I'm down. Put the sends down for every Sweden trip moving forward here because this has been a success for them in Sweden. In Sweden. And, Ian, this is where my next question goes. The Sens fans know the Sweden curse isn't about playing hockey in Sweden. They're 5-0-1 in Sweden. That sounds great. It's yeah. after. Now they yeah. got a lot of days off and they're up against the New York Islanders team after. Like, what do you think are some things that they can do to not let that break and not let the high of coming off Sweden kind of collapse and fall flat when they head back to North America here? I'll tell you guys, like, and the jet lag is real. And I'm thinking, I didn't even like physically exert myself like these players did. And I feel like I've been through a ringer. Yeah. Right, like I really do. Like I, like I see the I see the comments. Ian looks bad. Yes, I do. I am. <laughs> I am uh, absolutely tired. And like I think w- what they're gonna do is what. So today's Saturday, right? Uh, I'm yes. totally all day. Up here. Okay. So yeah, all day Saturday. Saturday. They're flying home around ten o'clock on Sunday, ten a.m. That'll put them back into Ottawa. You know, I think around noon or one o'clock. Just with the Man. time, I, I don't so. love that though, Ian. We, I was, we were saying this team's got to have the green light to go out and uh, so and party. My guess would be there's a, uh, light is tough. I, I, my, my guess would be there's a green light uh, for them okay. to go and enjoy themselves. And, and when you have four points, I think you do that. A lot of them have friends and family over, a lot of them brought their spouses and, and significant others. And, and this would be a chance to, you know what, go and do that stuff. So, you know what, go, go and enjoy yourselves. So, they fly back tomorrow. Um, Monday, the way DJ Smith explained it to me after the game was, they're going to just do a skills day, and he's not even going to be there. Coaching staff won't be there. It'll be Alfredson, Jesse Winchester, Sean Donovan. It's optional. So the league rules are, after you fly back, it has to be a day off and an optional that have to be folded into it. And then Tuesday, DJ said we'll do a full hard practice. Wednesday, complete day off. Thursday, back to it, full hard practice. Friday, game against the Islanders. So I, I, like I think, that. yeah, I think they look. They 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 brought a sleep expert in. Uh, you know, I'm, all I'm thinking about is that this sleep expert should have watched the game we just covered. Like that, <laughs> the sleep expert could use that as a. Yeah, exactly. No, no, oh no, God, that, that was tough. But at least, hey, at least you get the win, 
And that's that. Ian, my final question for you, Ian, we really appreciate you taking some time. I, I know that we yeah. – yeah, Gab LaFrance in the chat too saying that uh, he's appreciative. You took a lot of time uh, to hang out with fans over there. Oh, Were nice. you at this? This isn't my final question, but I do want to ask. <laughs> you're at some meetup Friday night? I, I was. And, you know, I feel bad. Like, I took a bunch of pictures. I didn't take one, like, myself with my camera, I don't think, which I feel really bad about. But it was amazing. I, I would say ballpark. If anybody was there, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think about 100 people were there, 100 cents fans. Ooh, like, awesome. And you know the cool thing is the last time I came to Sweden to cover the Senators was 2008 when I was with Sportsnet. And if you go back to 2008, I feel like Facebook was in its infancy and, you know, I, I was probably texting off of BlackBerry. So to, to just logistically set up a meetup, I don't think I met any fans in 2008. Maybe, you know, maybe the odd one you'd see in the street or whatever. Right. And to do this, I'm going to remember the interactions with this group that came over Uh Probably as well as the almost as well as the Tim Stutzel goal because it was really cool. It's a reminder that it's a real privilege to be a media member. It's a real privilege, and it's a even bigger privilege if you get an opportunity to work at an outlet that will um, allow you to travel for something like this. Like everybody else, let me put it this way: everybody else who came on this trip, they paid with their own hard-earned money, and I, and it's never lost on me, especially because I work behind a paywall. Actually, I'm going to be sending you guys a bill for this later, um, but I work <laughs> behind a paywall. And, you know, um, I, it really matters to me that I can take some time. It's not, it's not ever a bother. Like I, I, and I hope that that's how it comes across. It's never a bother. So even when you, I felt so bad, like when you guys, uh, I never, for whatever reason, I never saw your DM until today. I was, for whatever reason, I was like, whoa, that's a weird one. I got a DM from, from the, uh, uh, the boys at Locked On. And I felt so bad because I would have loved to have joined you earlier in the week, but I'm, I'm so glad to do this because I know you guys support my work a ton. The least I can do is uh, support work back of, of other blogs and podcasts. Cause it's a, it's, it, I was reminded this week this is, a, this is a terrific community. I am going to get to my final question now. And don't ask me trivia. Cause my brain is fried. <laughs> and, and all of my answers are going to be like Chris Campoli. No, <laughs> I'm not going that direction, but it, it's a, a, an often used trivia answer. I'm okay. Gonna- Daniel Alfredson, how much fun did he look like he was having? We read your article. That photo, too, was 10 out of 10. We grabbed it for uh, for the after the game, just saying Alfie's 2-0 and behind the bench, the main one yeah. the article there. But how much fun did he look like he was having in this weekend? Uh, I, you know, he had a great time. And and, and I really am appreciative. Like, he gave me a, a chunk of time on Thursday. And we just sat in the hotel. And, um, um, you know, he, he was nervous. He was excited. And you know what? He just – he loves being around the players and you can see the admiration that, that Tim and Brady and the guys have for him. Like he commands respect. Like he walks into a room and he just has an aura about him like that. He can, he can, he can command a room. And so, um, you know, I think for him to come home and think about like you're behind a bench in the NHL and that, by the way, he wanted to make it very clear to me that was all DJ Smith. And he was actually kind of surprised. And DJ asked him well before the Sweden trip, I think, I think we could use you. I think you'll benefit from it. I think it'll be special for you. Let's get you back there. And, you know, I think that's that that's pretty cool. So this is a great opportunity for him. His son lives about six and a half hours away, uh, which I didn't even realize you can go – you get in a car and you can go six and a half hours north of here. I don't even want to know what time the sun sets there. Uh, but he plays in this little town. Uh, you know, Hugo, his son is down here spending the weekend. His wife is here. His, his dad flew over on the charter. Anyway, been a great – 10 out of 10 uh, experience for uh, for Alfie. I think uh, for a ton of fans, too, they all saw uh, a lot of – I think I, – I would wager Michael Michael Landlauer took about 50 selfies, 5-0, if I had to guess. Like, everywhere. They, like, how many fans I ran into that – I ran into Mike Landlauer, and, I, and he took a picture, and he's such a nice guy. And so I this was great. Like, this was a great experience, I think, for – for a lot of the kind of the the faces of the franchise that uh, the Alfies, the Mike Andlowers, and uh, Timmy Stutzla coming back, and you know maybe maybe getting four out of four points, we can we can park how it happened. They got four out of four points, and 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 we'll get back to it on Friday. Get back to our nitpicking on Friday. Stick tabs to everyone who helped contribute to another great year on the Locked On Senators podcast. Pilsy, it's been a blast, brother. I can't wait to know what or find out what 2024 has in store for us, for the Ottawa Senators. If it's anything like 2023, we're in. 
for a ride. So I'm going to put my seatbelt, strap it on tight, and be ready to go for another trip around the sun. Yeah, I mean, Ross, hopefully the draft isn't the, the big part of 2024. Hopefully they get a, off to a better start uh, to the next season. Hopefully we continue to have great Send Central citizens and we got to keep all our recurring guests going. I mean, until we got to get meth up to 100 times on the show, that should be a goal for us. Absolutely. Well, we're going to start the new year with another new guest who will become a recurring yes. guest, the star player for PWHL Ottawa. I'm calling her the star. She is, she's unreal. She's won at every level. It's Emily Clark, Saskatoon's yes. finest. Uh, from the prairies to the capital city, we're hmm. really looking forward to showing you guys our interview with Emily Clark on Monday. Then Tuesday, we're back. It'll be another great year of Locked On Senators. So thank you very much. Hopefully everyone has a happy and safe New Year's Eve. And make sure to like, subscribe. Take all your family's fro- phones when you're out the holidays. Do make it. sure you subscribe. Locked On Senators. For today, though, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the final edition of 2023 of the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team every day.